Good evening, everyone. This evening's uh, we're going to continue off our uh, wireless set number 19 uh, uh, repairs and uh, whatnot. So, uh, currently, this is the uh, power supply we have in front of us. We've done a little preliminary work to this already, uh, and uh, essentially uh, just checked a few things over. We uh, reformed this capacitor on the top. This is a 32 microfarad 400 volt uh, capacitor on the uh, it's actually on the uh, 260 volt line so I uh, reformed that over the last uh, few hours to uh, make sure it wasn't going to blow up like a bomb when you uh, this old stuff you shouldn't uh, shouldn't just plug it in and give it a try a uh, handy thing to have if you're going to work on this stuff is a uh, set of the operating instructions this is a reproduction has lots of good information uh, schematics, where things are located because uh, it's uh, not quite obvious, there's no uh, no real uh, no real uh, uh, indications on the inside of the rig on the inside of the sets of what anything is so it's good to have some of this information on hand I'll point out a few little things about the, about the uh, wireless set 19 power supply. Uh, the first thing is the uh, when you pull it out you'll see these two fellas here. So this is a uh, filter capacitor. This is the vibrator. There's uh, two supplies in this. There's the dynamo supply and the vibrator supply. The vibrator supply is used only for receiving and uh, this vibrator is from 1944. So that's been around. Uh, be interested to see if it actually works. Most of the time this is not my first one of these, so most of the time I found that the uh, the old vibrators uh, do not want to actually uh, start, so uh, you have to take them apart and give them a bit of a clean. Uh, just to continue on at the top of this machine here, we have this very interesting contraption. This is a, uh, a relay. This is kind of like a rotary relay. This center piece here rotates, and as it rotates, it uh, makes the contacts uh, makes and breaks the contact, so it's uh, quite a unique thing. Uh, there's, uh, I believe, uh, it looks like four or five different uh, contacts in there. So uh, definitely a uh, interesting device. Sorry, am I trying to do this uh, all with one hand? Pay attention at the same time. <laughs> I need a camera person. All right, our next thing up here. If you can look in here closely, is the underneath here is a big black item. That's the actual dynamotor or rotary transformer, whatever you want to call it, uh, MG set. Uh, that's what I've known them as in the elevator land. And uh, yeah, so it's hiding in underneath the uh, the whole works here. So we'll put this thing on its end. Back out. I removed the screws from the front and one of the wires from the uh, front of the uh, I disconnected one of the leads going to the uh, dynamo supply so we can get a little look at it. So here you can see there's a uh, oops, there's a uh, we have a uh, filter, little filter capacitor for hash filter here. Oops, geez. Okay, so uh, we have a uh, little capacitor right here uh, for filtering hash off the uh, the commutator noise, and I have already taken the liberty of removing the end cap to the dynamotor, one end anyway. This is the easiest end to get at, uh, oddly enough. So if you look in there, that grease has been there for a long time. So I'm going to scoop that out, try to clean that up, repack it with some new synthetic grease, and uh, we'll get the get this end button back up again and then we'll see what we're going to have to do to take the bottom end off the other there's two bearings of course the other ones on the other end here can I get a bit of a view of it in there bring our light around so we can see yeah so there's another one down there it's not quite uh, it's easy to get at it looks like you have to remove the whole bottom of this thing to get at that part so that should be fun uh, fun being the operative word. Uh, for interesting 
interesting artifact here is this little card. Uh, this card shows the last time this was serviced. Looks like uh, the 18th of May, oops, 1960. So it's not the right, uh, obviously this has been mixed to match because that's not the right power supply. This power supply is not uh, with that uh, serial number of receiver. So interesting, interesting artifact anyway. Put back into its little holder. And somebody can find it down the road. Anyway, that's it for the moment. We'll uh, come back when we have more interesting things to look at. Okay, folks, we uh, have gotten the back of the dynamo to clear. Had to remove a uh, number of wires connected to the uh, back of the uh, uh, comm connections there. So uh, take lots of photos before you take that all off. Anyway, uh, with that we were able to kind of uh, sort of open the case up where we can get at the back. We've got the screws removed. We're going to open that up and uh, and uh, see what kind of grease is in there and repack it. Okay, so just uh, a quick little view of this <laughs> uh, gunk. I guess it's probably the best word we can call it. Sort of a uh, the washer, or what that was. Anyway, we have uh, this hardened crud in there. So uh, we'll scoop out as much as that of, uh, of that as we can, and uh, put some new uh, grease in there. So you can get a lot of it out just like this. The races are the uh, balls are right there. It's all wide open. So get out what we can get and uh, put some new stuff in. That'll probably do the trick uh, for uh, the rest of my time with it anyway. How's it going, folks? We're back and uh, we've got the. Uh, it's the next day. We've got the power supply all put back together again. Uh, I was able to successfully grease the. Uh, both the ends of the bearings and the uh, dyno motor, so uh, that uh, part is ready to go. Uh, the uh, I did try the uh, vibrator; it is not going to work, so I need to uh, remove that, uh, take it apart, and uh, clean it. Uh, there are very solid state replacements you can get, and I may uh, go that route down the road. But uh, for now, uh, I'll just take the old one and uh, open up the bottom of it and uh, and pull it out and uh, clean it. That's pretty much all it needs to have is a there's a little clean of the contacts in there. A uh, little thing to note about these uh, uh, old uh, power supplies with uh, dime motors in them is uh, you may want to, uh, well you will want to try it on a battery uh, with some fuses. The, the, fuse, the power supply has a fuse in it so I'm not too concerned about that but uh, the inrush current uh, to start the dime motor is quite high so uh, your regular uh, regular 12 volt power supply or 24 volt power supply likely fall on its face trying to uh, start that so uh, just uh, so you know I put the uh, uh, if I was going to run this for any period of time I put the uh, power supply in parallel with uh, a battery just to take the inrush currents uh, of uh, when the dynamo motor starts so we'll go back over here we are all hooked up ready to go let's just see if it spins <coughs> Hopefully, doesn't blow up in our face. No, well, it purrs like a kitten. So that's a good sign. So next step, next step will be to uh, hook it up to a radio and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> 